Hello and welcome to the Multicultural AFL Footy Show. Last week, Richmond decimated the Magpies. Brisbane continued on their merry way by defeating the Hawks. Colton sent the Adelaide Cross packing. The Eagles beat the Roos. St. Kilda prevailed over the Demons. And the Giants got home by a point over the Power. And if that wasn't enough excitement, post game, we saw an Empire's fairy tale proposal at the center of the MCG. Congratulations to Phil umpire Eleni Glutfis and Boundary umpire Dylan T. Sunday saw the Ducks roll over the Dockers, Geelong beating the Swans at the SCG, and Essendon just got home after the Gold Coast Suns were leading all day. All of this and more on our show tonight, including our interview with Essendon champion Terry Danaher and Eugene Horisco. I am Vanessa Gatica, and I'm joined by my two co-panelists, Javier Sincan and Gabriel De Angelo. Hello, guys. Hello, Vanessa. Vanessa, oh. Javier. Well, boys, round 19 kicked off last Friday night from the MCG with Richmond Tigers taking on the might of the Collingwood Army. And another disappointing result for the Magpies. In fact, the Pies, for the second week in a row, were more than 40 points down after a half an hour of footy. Meanwhile, in Tasmania, the Hawks were beaten by the rampaging Lions, and the other crows at the G had no answer to Carlton's defense, and Patrick Cripps, who is on his way to a Brownlow medal, looks like the Magpies are finished. The Lions can make it to the grand final, and Adelaide are lucky to still be in it. Javier, what do you think? Well, I believe, as you said, Adelaide are lucky to be in it. There's a lot of on-field and off-field drama that's going on at the moment. Don Pike, um, the, he's he's under scrutiny, I believe, well, from uh, what I've been hearing in the news, and also I, um, the, his relationship with the players. Uh, I believe that all added up. Uh, and Carlton, like I'm not taking anything away from the Carlton, the way they played, and uh, with, without Matt Cruiser as well and Charlie Connor, I think they did a fantastic job. And uh, as you mentioned, Cripps, uh, he's he's just brilliant. And not to have like a tag or like something strong player on him, that was. Um, that was the reason Adelaide couldn't match up. And uh, with Richmond and Collingwood, I think Collingwood finally the injury is taking toll on them. Um, having said that, Richmond um, is, 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 is a team which is very hard to beat now. Lynch and Revolt both at the front. Who you to go for and who to stop? L at the moment, I believe uh, Collingwood would be going through the paperwork where they will see, oh, where did we lose Lynch? Uh, the way he performed against them, but it's just too hard. Um, I, I, I wouldn't set that as a standard uh, for Collywood that because I think Richmond was too strong uh, on that day, and plus the injuries, as I mentioned before. And Hawthorn, I believe that game uh, has really uh, cemented uh, that Brisbane Lions are a real deal, even up to the Premiership. I believe they, the way they've uh, played against Hawks in um, Tasmania, I believe they, they've done a fantastic job. So they are a real deal and it's, uh, they are coming. Other teams need to watch that. Yeah, well, look, the Brisbane Lions, I mean, why not? Why shouldn't they be one of the premiership contenders? I mean, we've seen this season that the, the, this season has been just so wide open. We've seen some teams come into form, some, pe some teams drop out. Collingwood, which we will talk about, Geelong, West Coast, Richmond, they've all been ebbing and flowing in terms of their uh, form. And Brisbane Lions, they've just been doing so, so well all season. They've been a revelation. They've been a real breath of fresh air. And if they do make it to the grand final, very mm. well deserved. And if they win it, well, why not? I mean, they've been playing so, so well. And on your point with Collingwood, I mean, Collingwood, they've had Elliot, Maine, Thomas, Tuhill, H, Greenwood, Kelly, Langdon, Moore, Murphy, Noble, Reed, Wells, Beans, and Dunn. All of them are out, and some very key players like Beams, for example. So you know, Collingwood, they they, they can't expect them to do so so well with so many players missing uh, from their team. But um, who knows what can happen in the next few weeks? Collingwood have time to um, make up for it, but with so many players out, who knows? Mm. Moving along to the other games, West Coast always look dangerous on their home ground, as North Melbourne found out going down by 49 points. St. Kilda gave Brett Ratten his second win over overpowering the Demons. 
in the last five minutes of the game, and the Giants got up by a point against Port Adelaide in Adelaide. Very briefly, Gabriel, anything that you grabbed your attention? Well, yes. <laughs> St Kilda, <laughs> I have to say. I'm not saying it because I'm a St Kilda supporter. I'm just saying it because um, there, w there was a lot of uh, question marks about whether they can go to, to another win, if they can go back to back and have a, a, another win. And they did really, really well against Melbourne, who were um, leading for most of the game. And then St Kilda came back and did really, really well. And Marshall, I think, is just the revelation for the Saints. Mm. Yeah, well, I believe one uh, main thing for me, Brett Radon, the way he uh, dealt with Jack Carly after his mistake uh, in, 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 the, in, in the probably the third quarter or something like that, and he made him focus back on the game. I think rather than give him a spray, the way he dealt with him, I think that's creating the bond, and that's probably the su success story at St. Kilda at the moment. Yeah. So in these games, the Bulldogs defeated Frio by 47 points, Geelong down the Sydney Swans at SCG by 27 points, and Essendon came from behind to just win by 10 points in the last five minutes of the game against the Gold Coast Suns. Javier, briefly, what did you make of Essendon almost going down? Well, I believe I, I really want to know what do they have uh on their table when they go <laughs> in the halftime because the way they're performing at uh, since like round 15 or so they're coming back in the last quarters so I, that's that's what i want to know but it's credit to them they're doing a fantastic job at the moment yeah we will be back after this break with our special guests terry danaher and eugene horisco so stay tuned you are with the multicultural afl footy show <laughs> Welcome back. With us tonight, we have Terry Danaher and former Bendigo Bombers team manager Eugene Jurisco. Terry played 313 AFL games, starting off at South Melbourne in 1976, and two, 294 games with the Bombers to 1992. He represented Victoria 11 times, New South Wales four times, made the All-Australia team three times, and led the Bombers from 83 to 88. We welcome to the show Hall of Famer Terry Danaher and Eugene. Thank Hi, you. Vanessa. Thanks a lot. Nice to be here. Yeah. <laughs> nice to have you here, guys. Terry, can you tell us a little bit of your family life, like brothers and sisters, and where you started your magnificent footy career? Well, it started a long time now, a long time ago, but it started in a little um, town of uh, Ungary in New South Wales, just south of uh, uh, Dubbo. Yeah, we grew up in two coves there. We, we uh, as young lads, uh, come from a, a, a wheat, come out of wheat and sheep country, and uh, lived on a farm with Jim and Edna, and uh, ten of my siblings, uh, my brothers and sisters. So uh, big family, uh -huh. eleven in total. But uh, yeah, grew up in a uh, pretty much a sporting community. You know, uh, you live for your sport. And um, you know, it was a way of getting you into town to meet people, and uh, you know, it was just uh, and it was a dream of mine to uh, one day you watch the telly when we did get a television <laughs> eventually <laughs> in black and white. It started off at my young age, and then of course uh, Neil came along, and then Anthony, and then Christopher. Mm -hmm. So there was four of us that uh, eventually made it in the big time. And uh, so it made both Jim and Edna, my mother and father, pretty proud. We're the only four brothers that have ever played at one time in uh, VFL slash AFL football. So uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about that. Bit tougher now for the Selwoods. <laughs> They're a big family. There's other families that have been along the Shaw family, mm -hmm. Tony Shaw and Ray and, and those guys. So uh, we feel pretty chuffed, you know, to uh, more importantly, you know, do something that we all dreamt of doing, and uh, no, it's been great. Yeah. Now I'm a city slicker. With, with all of you, uh, all you, your brothers playing together, did, was there any chance, or was there any time when there were four of you were playing for Essendon at a time? And then um, I will just add on that with the '84 and '85 winning a premiership back to back. Uh, how did it feel? Well, that's uh, what we all play for. You know, play for success. Yeah, you got to look back and and. Uh, Put it in its right perspective, you know. I had, uh, over my career, I'm not talking to the other boys, but I had 17 years in the industry. You know, when you work it out, 17 years, um, four grand finals and two premierships. 
Wow. So you, you, uh, you run the highs and lows of the game. It, 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 it really does test you out and, uh, and it's a great learning curve for a lot of us guys and, uh, you know, and to have the opportunity to eventually captain the side after Neil. I was a bit dirty on that. <laughs> Neil, my younger brother, captained the club before I. I said, I can't have this. My younger brother lead me out onto the football field. What's going on? But, uh, but, it, it, it's, uh, but it, it does teach you a lot. You know, uh, many, you know you're, you're just growing up, you know, the skills have been able to you know, ride the ups and downs, you know, to enjoy the wins and, of course, the losses. You've got to pick yourself up. And then, of course, you've got the injuries and, you know, and all the other stuff, form. You, know, you, you, you have a run of good form, then you might have a time where you, you run out of, you can't get the footy, all that sort of stuff. And, and of course, you've got to blend in with the side. So you're part of a team. So, uh, but no, look, it uh, left me a lot of memories too, a lot of, lot of fond memories. And, and of course, those two grand finals were very special. I do bump into a couple of uh, me. Old, oh, they were my foe, but they're now pretty good mates in Robert Dippy and Aminico and <laughs> Dermy from time to time. They remind us. They, they said that probably Essendon was one of the best teams they'd ever come across. You know, in the time we had a lot of rivalry over a good number of years. But uh, they all said, "But uh, how many premierships you win again?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know what you're up to. Uh, five, five day, five night, me mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you buggers. Uh, Speaking of ex-players and memories, uh, during your time in Essendon you played with some amazing players. Who was the best player that you ever played with at the Bombers and who was the best player that you ever saw during your time as a player? Mm, he had, uh, well, the best player that I'd played with at Essendon would have to be, uh, it was pretty hard to, to cut him, to, uh, Tim Watson and um, Simon Madden are right up there. I, I don't think I could split them. They were, you know, both terrific uh, players, great uh, mates, you know, been through the highs and lows over a long period of time and, uh, and then, then not far behind them were guys like Van der Haar and Hawker, uh, Leon Baker who come to us rather late in his career, come to us in the start of 84, so at 27 years of age, very good player, Roger Merritt, Merv Nagel, the list goes on. You know, we had a, and mind you, there's a lot of country boys in amongst mm. all of them. And, uh, but no, I've probably missed a couple, but definitely uh, Simon and Tim are right up there. You know, I think they both won their fair share of be- be- best and fairest with the club. Always big, big, big performers in important games for us. And uh, as far as opposition goes, <laughs> there, were, there were plenty. It just depend how well you were, up, <laughs> whether you were up for the game. But Brucey e. Duell. Yeah, you know, Gary Malark, uh, Bruce who's a centre half back for Carlton, as we all know, and a great uh, defender. Gary Malarkey you know, from Geelong, a full back. Ross Glendinning, you know, uh, blokes like Bernard Tui, you know, another Geelong guy. But there were it did plenty of plays. It was a question of where you were at with your game. Yeah, you know, getting yourself up. Peter Foster uh, from Footscray, very hard competitor. And, uh, and that's what you loved. Yeah, you loved a bit of you know, someone that needs you <laughs> a bit. Sometimes that keeps you on the game, keeps your mind on it. And uh, <laughs> there were plenty of others. So uh, probably one that was very underrated and never gets en- enough acclaim is a bloke by the name of Chris Mew oh, that okay. played with Hawthorne. And, uh, and of course, from your old club, <laughs> club that you support. My old club, <laughs> not your old, but you support not that old yet. Wait, <laughs> Denny, uh, Denny Frawley oh, was Denny. a very very uh, died defender and yeah, never give you an inch. So the 1990 grand final, you copped you had 12 to weeks. That up, you? <laughs> yeah, you had to, had to. How did that happen? And also, what's your relation with Gavin Brown at the moment? Uh, I haven't seen Gav for a while, but uh, yeah, we're pretty good mates. I coached with him at uh, Collingwood. I mentioned earlier that I had a year at Collingwood and uh, uh, Gavin was a defensive coach there. But, uh, yeah, no, look, we've got a mutual respect uh, here for one another. Yeah, we're pretty good mates, mate. Like I've mentioned, all those, we, we got to rub shoulders with one another after games. Mm-hmm. But uh, when you get to a grand final, who knows how it's going to pan out. I didn't uh, go, come to the ground with my bag expecting that it was going to erupt like it was. Mm-hmm. I was going out there to get 20 possessions, <laughs> take eight marks, kick five goals. Yeah, mm-hmm. But <laughs> it didn't turn out quite that way. It didn't go to script. Yeah. But... Uh, 
But it was just one of those unfortunate things. You, you know, you're playing for, uh, you just don't let your teammates down and you're out there to, you know, to do your job. And uh, if I've got a niggle, got to upset people, I just do it. And, uh, and that was my role on the day. I was uh, playing defence, I was on the last line. Mm-hmm. I, I was that far from the goal square. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a kick and goal. So I had to yeah. stop him. I've had to scrag him, build him, do whatever. I'd had him pretty upset quarter time. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, kerfuffle. You know, yeah. They had a bit of a... Um, a bit of a blue up the ground, and uh, and we were right down the other end. I followed him up. And I said, "Little <laughs> Peter, out by the time we get there," but it didn't, unfortunately. And uh, he whacked one of our blokes, and I just squared it up. So uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. But, uh, <laughs> so Eugene, you have known Terry for about 20 years, and was team manager of Bendigo Bombers when Terry was coaching. Where were some funny moments that you can share with the viewers? Oh. Look, there's plenty of funny moments. Well, I know we haven't got time, but one of the funniest times was we arrived at Bendigo and we used to have a fellow called Eddie Schwegler and he was <laughs> our property steward. Uh-huh. He forgot to bring the blackboard or the oh, whiteboard. Wow. The whiteboard. Uh-huh. And uh, unfortunately, we just didn't have the whiteboard. So Terry looked around and he saw the truck and that had white sides. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, drive the truck up here. <laughs> drove the truck up to the to the coaching rooms mm-hmm. and rode everything up on the truck. <laughs> and then the, the boys came around and he was explaining things as to, you know, what they be, should, should be doing for the for the day the, the plan was up on the truck. Mm-hmm. Now, I did ask someone to take a photo of that. Uh-huh. And if that person's watching, please send me that photo. But we still haven't been able to find that female that did it. You didn't give me a permanent marker, that you? No. <laughs> no. Thank Beautiful. you again for coming in this evening. Terry Danaher, Essendon legend, and Eugene Horisco, Bendigo Bombers footy manager. Time for a break, and we shall be back with our previews and tips for round number 20. You are with the Multicultural AFL Footy Show, so stick around. Welcome back. Round 20 commences with Friday night footy from Marvel Stadium with North Melbourne taking on Hawthorne. Both teams are coming of reasonably heavy losses and it could be anyone's game. Saturday Essendon tackles Sport Adelaide from Marvel, GWS Giants and Swans played in the Sydney Derby, Frio hosts Geelong, Melbourne and Richmond lock horns at the MCG and Adelaide played St Kilda. Javier, briefly, your thoughts and tips. Well, I believe uh, with North Melbourne and the Hawthorne, it's going to be a close game. Um, North Melbourne, uh, they're playing good footy at the moment, but Hawthorne can beat any team on any day. So that's why it's going to be interesting. But I believe for the tipping purposes, I think I'm going to go for North Melbourne. And um, with Essendon and Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide hasn't shown us that much. And, you are, and Essendon, like, doesn't matter even if their other team is ahead, like, uh, for two quarters or so, they're going to come bounce back. Mm-hmm. Something that, as yeah. I mentioned before, they're doing the halftime. <laughs> so, they, yeah, I believe they, they're probably going to come back and uh, win any game. So it's an easy one for me, Essendon. And with local derby, I believe Sydney, uh, nah, I, th- I don't think they're, they're uh, at the moment comparable to GWS Giants. I think they, they're winning away games as well. And uh, the way they're gelling together as a, a, as a team, which is very good near the finals. So I believe it's going to be GWS uh, in that one. And Freer uh, at home, I think they, they might give a scare to Geelong. I think every team has been giving a uh, scare to Geelong at the moment. But the way they responded against Sydney this time, I believe they, they, they are sort of mm. getting their uh, answers right as well. So with this one, though, I, I'll probably tip Geelong, that one. And uh, Melbourne versus Richmond. Uh, I believe it's going to be a close game, maybe. Uh, Melbourne might show something to us mm. in this one. However, uh, as we talked before as well, uh, with Richmond, they are getting too strong at the moment. And we might see a lot of disparity between the scores and Richmond might uh, fly high in this. And Adelaide Cross versus St Kilda, well, St Kilda can get another winner over there. Um, th- at the moment, uh, their leadership group is down. They, they're struggling with their players. And uh, it, it hasn't stopped since the like, last grand final. So they haven't, uh, it, it, they're still uh, sort of recovering. And this is a very good time for St Kilda. They are rising. They are going down. It's the best moment, I believe. St Kilda will overpower Adelaide in that one. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, with the North Melbourne versus Hawthorne game, Hawthorne, they need to win this game. This is like their final. If if they lose this game, then it's pretty much out. Um, they've been really disappointing all season, and I really feel sorry for North Melbourne because mm. if North Melbourne 
didn't have that really bad decision from Lee Fisher, then North Melbourne could still potentially be in the mix to, to make it into the top eight. So I feel really sorry for North Melbourne. And Hawthorne, they have to win this game. But I think North Melbourne, they've been doing really, really well under Reece Shaw, who I think is pretty much going to be the coach uh, for the Kangaroos and very well deserved next season. Uh, Essendon versus Port Adelaide, well, speaking of disappointing, well, Port Adelaide, they've mm. just been really, really bad. Essendon, they've been so, so good these last couple of weeks. I mean, they've been really, really sensational. The way they've been playing, the way they're just free-flowing and attacking. The mm. game against Gold Coast, I think people should just calm down a little bit. I know it was almost a massive upset, but I think it was just a hiccup. They'll bounce back, they'll do really well, and they'll easily beat Port Adelaide. I think you were right about GWS and Sydney. Pretty much spot on. Mm. One team's going up, the other team's going down. I mm. think GWS, yeah. they're, uh, they're on the way mm. um, to, to possibly making it the top four, potentially. But um, they're fighting for a top four place, and they'll definitely want to beat Sydney. Um, Fremantle against Geelong. Yeah, I, I see your point. Fremantle at home, they should be competitive, but the way they're going mm. uh, has been really bad. Geelong, they had a, a, a lacking of form these last couple of weeks where they've been losing games on their own mm. lack of um, scoring opportunities because they, they're missing so many uh, opportunities in front of goal. But I think they've found their form again. I think mm. that they'll beat Fremantle away. Melbourne versus Richmond. Well, Richmond easily. Melbourne, they've just been atrocious this season. Uh, Richmond, they're back in form. They'll do really well. And Adelaide against St Kilda. I would love it if St Kilda beat Adelaide because it's been a long time since they beat uh, Adelaide in Adelaide. Uh, Adelaide, they're, they're in a bit of a, a free fall. I mean, Don Pike had a, an emergency meeting at his home mm. with the rest of his players. So um, there's something wrong. Uh, at Adelaide, but uh, hopefully St Kilda can win. And if anyone at St Kilda is watching, please, please hire Brett Ratner as coach next season. On to Sunday's three games, and they will be hard to pick. Collingwood take on the Gold Coast Suns at the MCG. Well, if the Magpies lose this one, they might as well give up on the finals. Carlton take on the West Coast from Marvel Stadium. We will find out just how good Carlton are in this one. Last game from the weekend. The Brisbane Lions home at the Gava challenge the Bulldogs. This might prove to be the Lions' day if they make it make to the top of the ladder. What do you think, Gabriel? Yeah, absolutely. I think that the Brisbane Lions, because they're just doing so well and they're at home, then they're going to beat the Bulldogs. But the Bulldogs, they could potentially cause an upset here because they're finding uh, form at the right time and they're just out of the eight, so they might make it. But Brisbane Lions for me. Uh, on the other games, Collingwood versus GW, uh, sorry, Gold Coast Suns, uh, might as well not show up. Collingwood are going to win easily. And Carlton against West Coast, I'm going to actually pick an upset. I think Carlton are going to win. They've had su such a good run of form and yes, they just seem yes. to be so um, refreshed and re-energised under David Teague. So I'm actually going to pick Carlton for this one. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I agree with the... Uh, I'm going to go for that upset as well. I've, I've got a firm belief in Carlton as well, that they, they, they can beat uh, West Coast in West Coast. And the other one, Western versus West, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Brisbane Lions versus Western Bulldogs. I believe uh, Western Bulldogs need to prove a point here if they want to be a real contender in the finals as well, if they get to the finals, and they need to make a big statement in this one. So I'm going for Western Bulldogs. I believe they might upset Brisbane Lions. They might take them lightly. And uh, with the Collingwood versus Gold Coast Suns, I believe Collingwood with all the injuries, all the names you mentioned, but I'm still, they will be too good for Gold Coast Suns. That's it for another week. You've been watching and listening to the Multicultural AFL Footy Show all around Australia and the Community Radio Network, Community TV, and on Aurora TV Foxtel. We are also online through the NEMBC's AFL Footy website. See you next week. I am Vanessa Gatica. I'm Herbie Singh. I'm Gabriel D'Angelo. And thank you for watching. Let me hear you.